With iOS 16 and macOS Ventura, Apple introduced a totally revamped home app. Let's take a look at the app and all the changes, good and bad, that Apple brought to it. Functionality-wise, one of the biggest changes to the home app will be the addition of the Matter standard. Now, that's not coming until later this year, but once it does, the universal standard should provide widespread compatibility between devices of basically all manufacturers. As Apple plans to add Matter support, so do Google, Amazon, Samsung, and others. The standard was created collaboratively between the companies and the Zigbee Alliance. And in addition to creating better interoperability for the end user, it should make it easier to develop smart home products. The Matter standard has seemingly been on the horizon for a while, with devices delayed from release in 2021, but now it seems things are finally prepping for proper release, with Google also preparing to update its Nest Hubs with Matter support. Things like Homebridge, which you can learn more about in my tutorial, will become less and less necessary as more devices are universally compatible. Notably, Apple says an Apple TV or HomePod Home Hub will be necessary for matter support. And on the note of Home Hubs, there is some confusion regarding the use of iPads as Home Hubs. One of the new things coming to the Home app is a new architecture, and Apple says this will lead to faster and more reliable performance, especially in homes with many smart home devices. It seems like this new architecture coming to the app isn't going to support the use of iPads as hubs, instead requiring an Apple TV or HomePod. Previously, it seemed like iPads would lose support to act as home hubs entirely, but that may not be the case. Hopefully, as iOS 16 gets closer to an actual release, the full plan for the new architecture becomes clear. I personally use an iPad as a home hub, so I'm going to need to get a new one, but I might end up waiting until next year, as Code 95 Mac found in iOS 16 points to an unreleased HomePod model, and a new HomePod, similar in sound to the original, is rumored to be coming next year. Moving from future improvements to the real changes in usability that exist right now in the developer beta, the changes iOS 16 brings to the home app are front and center. Whether you're on a Mac, iPad, or iOS, you'll get the new app once you've updated to either iOS 16 or macOS Ventura. Going into the new home app, right at the top, whether you're on a mobile device or desktop, shows off categories. You can see in my app, I have climate, lights, and security. If you have more devices in your home, there are plenty more categories. And clicking on any one of those shows all the accessories of that type, organized by room. Below there, you have the camera view. Up to four cameras will display in that grid, and if you have more than four cameras, you can swipe to the right to see them. Right below my cameras, I have favorites. Below that, you can see each room of the house as you set it up listed, along with the accessories in that room. If there are accessories you don't want to show up on the home page, you can go into the settings for that specific device and choose to hide it from home view. If you prefer the dedicated pages for each room, you can see these by clicking on the three dots in the upper right hand corner and then selecting whichever room, or by clicking on that room on the home page. You can easily change up the order of the home screen by tapping in the three dots in the upper right corner and choosing reorder sections. One annoyance with the new design is that when you're just trying to turn off or on a device, you have to specifically tap on the device's icon on the left-hand side of the button. Otherwise, it opens a full screen button where you can then go into the settings for that device. It's pretty easy to misclick and open the settings, but overall, it's a minor inconvenience. The new homepage makes it so much easier to scroll through and access your devices, whether you just have a few or you have a ton. Beyond the home app, iOS 16 brings a ton of changes to the lock screen, one of those being widgets. The home app is one of the native apps I really wanted to get lock screen widgets, and thankfully it did, but not quite how I wanted it to. These are mostly set just to give you information about your home, rather than offering control of your devices. With the current widgets, you can see your thermostat's temperature, information about which lights are on, show your security alerts, or show your home summary. Now, two more things I would love to see come to the app, and Bradley mentioned these last month over on 9to5Mac are continuous recording through HomeKit Secure Video and granular sharing. Currently, cameras can only record through HomeKit Secure Video when there's activity, rather than 24-7. Of course, 24-7 video doesn't make sense for all applications, but it would be a nice option. There's also not a great way to share just a couple of smart home devices to another user or guest. Whether that's only granting control for a few lights or limiting access to your thermostat, there are plenty of reasons you may want to share some home devices with others without sharing your whole home. 
What are your thoughts on this? Do you have a HomeKit based smart home setup? And are you excited to give the new app a try? And once Matter starts really making it to market, are you going to try those devices? I definitely will. Let me know in the comments down below. Like this video if you did, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from 9to5Mac.